play a thought I had this week thinking about Shadow the Hedgehog. Am I crazy? He kind of he kind of sounds a little bit like like Mr. Burns. Like, was that really Maria's last wish? <laughs> Smithers, Smithers, what was Maria's last wish? Sonic, I'm all right. Sonic Weekly is the show. Every seven days or so, we deliver hot, piping new Sonic news and analysis and conversation, baby. I'm Grant, and uh, I'm not alone. With me is Smoothies. Hi, Smoothies. Hi, you're not alone because I'm here next to you. Hi. Did I ever tell you what Smoothies stands for, or should we save that? Oh, let's not save it. Let's open it right now. What does Smoothies stand for? Smoothies stands for Sonic Movies. It was an old YouTube channel that I had, and I uh, eventually was like, I don't want people to call me Sonic Movies. I gotta gotta compress it into Smoothies. I would turn Sonic uh, video games into movies, and then it was called Sonic Movies. That's amazing. Um, <laughs> it was an old YouTube thing. Uh, wow, what a great way to start this off. Uh, yeah, It actually is a great way to start this off. Uh, we are missing our director of Sega Saturn development, Bo, but in uh, his place, first guest of the show, wife of the podcast, animator, artist, it's Ashlyn Anstey. What's the origin of your name, Ashlyn? Um, my... Grandmother stole my name out of the birth section of the newspaper, and then she proceeded to stalk that woman uh, for the rest of her life. And she would cut out little articles she found about the other Ashlyn, and she would paste them in a little book. Okay, that was scarier. I didn't expect that. I thought <laughs> that's yeah, the origin of my name. That. And out of the shadows, into the spotlight, the star of the show. You know him, you love him. It's David the Lurker. David the Lurker. Hi, David. Oh, hello, Grant. How are you? Uh, I am fine. Welcome to Sonic to Talking <laughs> Weekly. Man, my name is just David, you know? What What about the lurker? Right. I wasn't named until, like, the day I, I had to leave the hospital birthing room. Whatever, you know, there's a delivery room. They let you hang out for a couple of days, and they're like, you better get out of here, kid. We're not going to pay for your way. Um, and so I, I was just boy for a while. I was um but then i became david and i'm a lurker because i wouldn't post on message boards uh but very rarely so i was always lurking and that's that's how that happened before that i just called myself dav d-a-v <laughs> which isn't how anyone shortens david uh you're dave or you're david nobody's ever dav <laughs> thought i could make it a thing at 12 and it just didn't stick yeah yep uh, well, you have the boldness, which I like. I'll tell you the origin for Grant sometime, but honestly, it's too dark of a story to start with. Uh, so oh, we're just going to leave that as a as a show mystery. Stay tuned. Where does the Whoa. name Grant? What could that possibly mean? Right. What story am I hiding behind that? Well, the main thing uh, is now, like regular listeners of this show will know that we've had a lot of great guests, a lot of amazing guests on this show. We do it every week. We have the opportunity to bring people on. And this week is no exception. Ashlyn has created a bridge between our show and a great talent of Hollywood, California, of imdb.com, <laughs> of your TV screens. We're excited to have him. Uh, Ashlyn, will you introduce our special guest? Oh, I'm so lucky to introduce uh, Aaron Long. So fun story about Aaron Long is that I lived with his wife uh, when I first moved to LA for three beautiful months. Uh, we shared a one-bedroom apartment in Santa Monica that Probably shouldn't have been rented, but that's how it goes. Um, and Aaron is also Canadian. And if you have been around long enough, you know that all Canadians know each other. It's just a fact. Uh, if you if Canadians spend more than 10 minutes, they'll find somebody they know. Um, so Aaron is uh, from Hales from Toronto. Uh, he also directed on BoJack Horseman and Tuga and Birdie and all of those good shows. Oh. He also made his own cartoon Sublo and Tangy Mustard, which is a big internet hit. Uh, so you may have seen it. Uh, what else can I say about Aaron? He's actually living in Canada right now. Yeah, I'm back in Canada now. He is actually coming here. He ran as fast as he could back to LA just to record this podcast. No, he's in. Aaron, he's what in if Canada. we what if we just talked about you the whole time but never actually let you talk? <laughs> Hi, Aaron. Hey. Three and a half hours of just compliments. <laughs> I'm excited to talk some Sonic. Because I feel like uh, I have like permanent sonic brain rot from just like, you know, <laughs> my entire childhood like revolved around Sonic. Yeah. Welcome to Sonic Weekly. Ooh, that's, uh, right. that's all of us. Are you wearing a Sonic shirt? I am. It looks like that could yeah. be the blue rat. And I didn't plan it, but it's uh, it's one of those born to die world. Oh. You know, it's one of these ones. 
that I got at uh, Comic Arts LA, I think. Uh, it's a I'm Sonic and Tails. It says Born to Die. What does it say? Oh, yeah. It says Born to Die. World is a fuck. Kill them all. 1989. I am trash man. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. I think the real the original version is like a drawing of a dog and a cat. But I saw this with Sonic and Tails instead. It's classic Sonic and Tails, so I was like, I gotta get it. <laughs> the other major thing that we have to address before we uh, let loose into whatever this goose is going to be cooked as, Ashlyn, stop making that face. That made sense. There's big news. We, uh, a new Sonic game was announced this very week. We just rewatched the show for it. Uh, David, could you tell us more? Can you set the stage? It was sort of leaked for a while, then it was leaked pretty definitely, and then... It came out yeah. during the Sony State of Play, a uh, two-minute trailer. Uh, what did we see, David? What did, what did we see? Like every, everyone tuned in because they were like, hey, they're going to announce some games. I think they announced other games, but nobody cares about those. Oh, no, right. uh, it, yes, it was, it was leaked on Twitter a few days prior where somebody made a cryptic tweet explaining what would be seen at the State of Play. And we're like, wait, what, Sonic? And then another leaker was like, yeah like it is what you think it is but it's even more than what you think it is and then boom sony went here's some footage of a game uh so it was basically what sega has announced it's called sonic x shadow generations uh it is a remaster is the new ampersand x is the new ampersand right it could have been sonic ampersand shadow yeah but this isn't the 90s no it It could have been Sonic versus Shadow. Sonic but V Shadow, like the Batman Sonic Superman. Sonic V Shadow, <laughs> Dawn play. of Generations. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Sonic, it could have been a Slash, a Sonic <laughs> Slash Shadow, but I guess we'd Sonic be in a... Sonic question mark Shadow? Situation. Sonic? Shadow Generation. Sonic or Shadow. You have to choose one, and then the <laughs> other half of the game you just can't touch. What if it's like Sonic parentheses Shadow, so you have to like <laughs> multiply them, and then... <laughs> Right. Then it's generation. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. uh, Sonic X Shadow Generations. It is a remaster of the original 2011 game, Sonic Generations, um, which is meant to include some additional content, whatever that is. But I guess the biggest thing is the Shadow campaign. And in this uh, minute 10 trailer, half of it is devoted to footage we've already seen. Then we get a little segue with the original teaser trailer CG where, oh, there's there's modern and classic Sonic and they're jumping in the air. But, whoa, who cut through? Why, it's Shadow the Hedgehog, the coolest character from 2001. And then we see the coolest. (laughs) Yeah, he is the coolest. And he (laughs) and we're getting a neat little campaign uh, involving him. Uh, it looks like he's he's going up against Black Doom, who was the villain of the Shadow of the Hedgehog game from 2005. Uh, we don't know a ton about it yet. Um, just basically what we see in that trailer and that indeed Black Doom is the villain. And it is its own separate story that somehow takes place during the original generations. Yeah, that's what it is. Let's jump straight to the guest because you didn't know this existed until uh three minutes ago right yeah i got some thoughts like first obvious question is there going to be a classic shadow (laughs) because that doesn't exist but like they they might have one right i want that uh it'd be like a cute little felix the cat style version of him right but uh my other thought about this is it's weird to me because uh i don't think i've mentioned it in the last couple of minutes since we started but i'm sort of like a lapsed sonic fan i'm not really like actively following the new stuff partly because i don't have a new system but like i feel like generations was the last time i was really um engaged with sonic and that does feel like a while ago to me but it still feels weird that they're already like and now we're doing like a nostalgia for generations thing you know it's weird to think that the game is closer to being 15 years old yeah than (laughs) than it is being younger than that yeah yeah i mean (laughs) It's like almost as old now as like the original games were when they made it. Well, that, that was for the 20th anniversary, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. But it's bizarre because that itself was all about nostalgia. This feels like why not kind of do a new. I don't know. It's weird that it's still generations to me. Yeah, it is. It's on one hand, it's exciting because generations is just being ported forward to the Nintendo Switch, the PlayStation systems. And it wasn't on those. It was on Xbox, it was on Steam and PC, but not available on these other systems. So it's nice that that'll be there. 
and I guess the episode Shadow, I liked, it a lot. I liked it a lot. It's, I mean, a lot of Sonic fans will say it is one of the best, if not the outright best 3D Sonic game or the best outright Sonic game, depending on who you talk to. I hold it in pretty high esteem um, and it's really fun to replay. So I'm, I'm yeah. looking forward to being able to replay it on the Switch. But it's interesting you bring up Classic Shadow because I think we got the answer to that this week as well. And I think it's no, because they also announced that there is going to be a Shadow costume coming to sonic superstars which was actually let's play a quick game aaron long do you know what sonic superstars is i've heard those two words together but no <laughs> okay very fair uh i think uh a it's it went under a lot of people's radar uh because it came out the same day as spider-man 2 and super mario brothers wonder uh or in the same week so it sort of got a little bit buried but anyway that's a classic sonic game it's just classic sonic tails knuckles and amy Shadow will be coming as a skin, but it's as a the modern version of him. So uh-huh. we were wondering on a previous episode, oh, will they do classic Shadow? But it seems like probably not, right? I feel like that's a real missed out. Like it wouldn't be hard to implement, but it would. A lot of people would probably like to see that. It would be divisive, I think, because yeah. you know, uh, I can I can see the veins in David's head getting bigger because it, it would disrupt the lore. They're, like classic oh. Sonic is the is the is the younger version of the character. But if it's a uh, skin, it's not a part of the lore. It's just a right. skin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you could hypothetically shove whoever you want. Uh if yeah. you're like, well that's not part of the story, it's just for funsies. You know, like yeah. how you lock Sonic 2 on top of Sonic and Knuckles. You're playing as Knuckles in Sonic 2, but yeah, he yeah. didn't canonically go through there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He was canonically just hanging out in his island, probably, you know, taking some naps, yeah. eating some grapes. <laughs> That's a good point that doesn't get brought up enough. Knuckles the Echidna in Sonic 2 is canonically impossible. Mm-hmm. Do you think right. I'm stupid, game? <laughs> Do you think Knuckles put, d- destroyed the Death Egg and knocked his own island into the sea? That <laughs> yeah, I remember putting Sonic 2 on top of my Sonic and Knuckles in the Genesis, getting to the title screen and then going, I think I'm a fucking idiot. And then I just pulled it out. Non canon. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, I mean, uh, I, 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 you know, I care about canon and lore to a certain degree, but there are there are others who take it far more seriously. I think it would be amusing if a classic Shadow was designed, but also, yeah, technically, Shadow's in a tube and he can't be in any. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I don't know if 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 they wanted to be funny, they could they could try to do like, oh, what would what would the sh- classic Shadow equivalent be? I feel like that might be Mighty the Armadillo because he's the other character that's essentially oh, Sonic the Hedgehog. Back. Yeah, he's uh Where is he? Is he in like some tube? <laughs> he's uh What's he canonically been up to since like Chaotix right. or whatever? He he is briefly in a two uh uh have you played Sonic Mania yeah. at all? Oh yeah, is he unlockable or something in that? Yeah, in, in the uh, encore DL- mode. Paid DLC. You oh, have to yeah. pay for the privilege yeah. of yeah. Mighty yes. the Armadillo and Ray the Flying Squirrel. Yeah, but they are both technically in tubes if you <laughs> when you start the encore mode campaign. So that is a good point. That yeah, that's a very good point. I, it's, it all ties together. Wait, <laughs> yeah, Aaron, uh, maybe you could tell us also just your Sonic origin story of how you oh, sure, yeah. came to know Sonic, and you you know you mentioned being lapsed, and I th- <laughs> when we talked yeah. on mm-hmm. on email, it was like, oh, it sounds pretty similar to my story and some others, uh, but you have still maintained your independence <laughs> from the church of the blue rat. Yeah. Yeah. Um, your purity. We say, I would say I'm uh, sonic no. agnostic now, maybe or something. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You didn't live in an apartment with him for three months. Is what you're saying? Okay. I can't, no. Uh, but so, yeah, when I was um, like all through the nineties, I was obsessed with Sonic. I basically, I saw my uncle playing Tetris on a game game boy when I was like two years old in 1992 and i was like hey what's that and he said oh it's a video game and he he didn't want me to play so he just like kind of moved it away and get to see so i asked my dad for a video game for christmas and he got me sonic 2 and sega genesis and my mom was like he's two years old what are you doing this is ridiculous (laughs) and then uh i got it and i started playing and uh i was hooked then i saw the cartoons you know adventures of sonic the hedgehog and the saturday morning one I, i had subscription to archie uh for like years and years, wow. long after I stopped liking it, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it kept. Hoping. Do you remember when you stopped reading? Yeah, it was like uh, way after I should have. It was like a uh, hundred and twenty something ish. Oh wow! Like I made oh, wow. it through that yeah. shitty, shitty anime inspired era where Ron Lim was penciling everything. Wow. Okay. And, you know, I kept hoping it would go back to like uh, 
the first 50 issues or something. And then eventually it was, my hope was just like withering away and I gave up on it. But anyway, I, I was playing all the games up until about after Sonic Heroes, I kind of dropped off. And then I played Unleashed and Colors and Generations. And then I dropped off again. <laughs> okay, yeah, you've you've played a fair amount. I mean, that's that's I also dropped off before Sonic Heroes, but recently Ashlyn and I have been trying again to get through Unleashed. That's a Sonic blank spot uh, for me, and I've kind of pawned it off on Ashlyn because I find it very frustrating. The werewolf, the werehog Ashlyn, stuff. Yeah, yeah, the werehog stuff. And Ashlyn likes to smash things in video games, right? <laughs> Yeah, and I'm also quite, I think with Unleashed and like some of the more broken Sonic games, you have to be very like stubborn, mm -hmm. like almost like mentally ill amounts of like stubborn. Yeah. <laughs> oh, get no. good at like wrapping your trolling around the broken mechanics and stuff. Yeah. And, and the broken like... piece inside of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Because that's what I found when I played like even Heroes, but definitely like Unleashed too, that the first little while I'm playing, I'm like, this is like bad. This is like broken and so glitchy. And then you play it enough to kind of predict where all the glitches are going to be. And you're like, oh, I can't do the thing that you're supposed to do. I know I'm going to have to do this other thing. And then you start to enjoy it. Would you say that like when you fell off of Sonic, you also didn't play many video games or did you just keep playing video games, just not Sonic? I think I did eventually fall off video games too, but I was, just, that was when I was, you know, really into like, um, uh, Grand Theft Auto and like Metal Gear Solid and stuff like I just kind of stopped playing platformers as much I guess because no that's not even true because I was playing a bunch of PS2 ones you know uh, Ratchet and Clank Jack and Daxter I guess I think it was just specifically that Sonic games got kind of bad because <laughs> I really wanted to keep liking them <laughs> that's fair and those games Jack and Daxter Ratchet and Clank they're kind of Sonic like in some ways right I mean they're 3D action platformers none of them they're... have the speed component but I like you know 3D platformers yeah I like those Rayman Origins and Legends. Those were fun uh, other platformers I played you, in the last decade. You can decade. say the word Mario here. It's okay to say Mario. I haven't actually right. played a lot of Mario. I've never been wow. a big Nintendo oh, wow. guy. I had a GameCube and, I, and a Game Boy, and that was it. So, you know, I've missed out on a lot of Mario. But I know that whole franchise is a lot more consistent and, like, there's, like, a higher baseline of quality. But also, yeah. I feel like it's got less character. Like, that's true. I can't imagine getting excited about Mario as a character in the way that I loved Sonic yeah. as a kid, you know? It's true. Yeah. Like, he's just some guy in good games. <laughs> yeah. But Sonic is like a cool guy in sometimes good games. That is true. But, you know, I think Mario's every man appeal is part of it. I right. guess so. I guess it's almost like Mickey Mouse. It's like fill in the, like, fill it, insert personality here, and it's your personality, kind of. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I think that's part of the yeah. deliberate appeal that they leave it blank. Absolutely. And he knows his way around a plunger, so. <laughs> Yeah. You you got to get yourself a guy who's not afraid <laughs> to use a plunger. Yeah. That, yeah. That's the number one thing on Bumble sites. Bumble, yeah. Bumble sites. Hinge. Hinge. Dot coms. Hinge know. dot site. <laughs> Hinge dot gov. One question that I had about, because as we've brought in a lot of Ashlyn art friends, is there is a common thread that a lot of people made like fan art or like that sort of got them into <laughs> art. Do you feel like that's yeah. true? for you oh for sure i think i i learned how to draw sonic stuff and then i learned how to draw other stuff like i was drawing looney tunes and sonic and that was about it for like the first 10 years of my life i feel like the way i draw hands is still uh you know i could probably point to specific panels of the archie comics and be like oh yeah i just copied that hand <laughs> you know stuff like that yeah i really liked um the spaz hands i like spaz from uh patrick Spaziano. but i feel like he was almost too good for me to imitate so i imitated uh this guy i don't know how to say his name art mawini yeah you know him? we were we were just talking about him being a, a potential guest we could maybe Whoa, reach out to that'd be because... amazing yeah uh, I, I i think i'd like that I yeah love to he, i mean hear he... that. He was deep in Sonic because he wasn't just an Archie. He worked on the cartoons, yeah. Right, yeah. His, uh, I guess his company did did a bunch of storyboards for the Saturday morning series. Oh, so, and so he was cool. directly, and and those little golden books. I don't know if mm -hmm. you remember those. Oh yeah, yeah. up against the wall and the secret admirer and the Sonic yeah. lost his <laughs> shoes or whatever. He did yes. lose his shoes. The shoes blues. Sonic shoes blues. The shoes yeah. blues. Uh huh. I remember that book specifically because I. Uh, as a little kid, cut it up. I cut it out to, to have like to have like Sonic, I guess like Oh yeah. I don't want to call them paper dolls, but like be able to move them around on like a on a background. Oh, that's cool. Do you know what I mean? I did. I feel <laughs> like I did that kind of thing. Yeah. But yeah, I did a lot of Sonic fan art. I drew my own Sonic comics where 
especially once I felt like Archie was letting me down and I couldn't read the Fleetway ones because I didn't have access to them. So I was like, I'm going to do my own. They're going to be like so accurate to the games and stuff. But then I started putting weird stuff in where I was like, it'd be cool if Sonic smoked cigarettes. And then my mom saw them and was like, what are you doing? You can't do this. <laughs> uh, Sonic team did that. I think uh, Sonic had like depression in my comics because like fighting <laughs> Robotnik was the only thing he was good at or something. Oh, wow. It was like I was going for some kind of like weird like personality study of him or something. Uh, you were doing a deconstruction before it was cool. Yeah, yeah. Is what it it's sounds like the like. Evangelion version of Sonic. <laughs> but also I was I was doing a bunch of Sonic fan games. I used to be uh, uh on the Sonic fan games HQ forum. Oh god, really? Yeah. Did you have an account there? I did, but I don't think I really posted much. I, I was Aaron the Lurker. Right. Wait. Okay, now I'm curious. You can cut this out if you don't want it. I just want to know what your username was. Oh, you wouldn't because... know. I mean I don't even remember. It was Joe something. Joe some okay. Joe Schmo or something. It was just something like stupid like that. Look, I mean because I've been around forever. I went to the SFG HQ forums, <laughs> you know, SSRG. I don't know if you remember like Area 51 or the regular or the original. I remember that, yeah. yeah Sonic HQ just. I was on Sonic HQ bit. too, yeah. I mean, I didn't post them. enough oh. for any, you know, you wouldn't remember what I. I guess not. But I, I mean, if but you I was posted there. anything, I probably saw it. At, it's right. possible. Because that's where you I was. David saw. the Lurker over. Yeah. Just <laughs> hiding. So you probably wouldn't have seen me. I lurked too much. Ah, <laughs> oh, man. We're lurking in the same places, doing yeah. the same wow. Sonic things. If two lurkers meet in a podcast, do they make a sound? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Those fan games were funny. I get, we don't have to, but we can. Oh, we don't wanna... we can... no, yeah, let's talk about fan games. I mean, that's definitely. I mean, that's the golden age. Because yeah, we've was... had a couple of people ask us to talk about fan games. They're probably like, whoa, are you going to talk about like Sonic GT or Triple Trouble 16 bit? It's like, <laughs> maybe, maybe you want to talk about Tales in the Quest for 100 Rings. Uh, I remember uh, it was like, what was this? Sonic Madventure. I remember that was a. Yeah. A, like yeah, a comedy cool. one. Mm -hmm. It was like an RPG. Sonic. Uh, time attacked that one was pretty cool because it was finished oh that yes it was most of, them, are... <laughs> most of them are like two level demos and then just disappeared time attacked has a level that's full of cameos of people who posted on the moogle cavern which was another <laughs> sonic forum for some reason even though it's named after final fantasy it's like no but actually it, it's a sonic site that was very early internet like oh this site was like yes. developed for one thing and became a different thing exactly i yeah. just remember there were so many demos it's like everybody was trying to come up with cool names for them I and mean, they were all like sonic the ultimate moment or something like <laughs> sonic <laughs> restrictions just picking random nouns you know mm -hmm. they feel like uh, everybody was trying to do the metal gear solid thing of like substance and then subsistence and then, like <laughs> revengeance and just like sonic insert noun and that was like most of the thought that went into a lot of the fan games <laughs> including mine the title sonic oh. unleashed was part of the reason that i always sort of looked at the game with a side eye because i was like that sounds like a fan game yeah exactly yeah <laughs> it does yeah no, there was there was a fan game called sonic boom well it was a rom well there was a fan game and then there was a rom hack and then they just did yeah i remember that they used it anyway yeah. i remember retro sonic being such a big deal because that was the first one i think i saw where it was like oh somebody cracked the code and they got it to feel like a proper sonic game with like the the physics and stuff yeah, and then I guess eventually he he it kind of evolved into Sonic Mania, <laughs> like a decade or something. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, kind of. Yeah, I mean, Retro Sonic was uh, Christian Whitehead's first foray into fan games. That's and... when he was called Taxman, right? Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, the uh, the tech that he started to make back then eventually became the Retro Engine. It is a very direct line. Uh, yeah, that was a big deal because it was the first time where it felt like a fan game could actually play like Sonic. Yeah, yeah. Before that, it was all sort of constricted to like uh, click and play or, yeah, or you know, games very rudimentary. That's what I was using. Yeah. I remember Multimedia Fusion was the, the one that I didn't have. Yeah. But I was like, oh, that one looks so good. Oh, <laughs> you can do such nice. smooth fades and stuff on it. Uh, so if you were working on a fan game, did you ever publish it? Did you ever do the one level demo? I must have. People? Uh, yeah, because I did a couple. Did Oh. They're probably on there, but I don't even know if I would recognize what they were. Oh, really? Ooh, wow. Yeah. Did you submit them to Sage? No, no, no. I think Sage no, was like, that. by the time that was really, the ball was rolling on that, I'd kind of given up. Okay, well, all right. Yeah. But I was still uh, aware of it. I was like checking in on Sage, but I wasn't doing anything at that time. Okay. <laughs> I got really into doing elaborate intro cutscenes, and then I was like, oh, I think I just want to make cartoons. And like, <laughs> the actual game part is starting to feel like a chore <laughs> after like one level. Uh... Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, I feel like 
I mean, it's just one way to to express creativity and try to figure out what what is it you actually like. I mean, I guess that's the case for a lot of random fan games. It's have promise, and then they go, "Well, actually, I want to do this thing. This is actually the one thing I like, and it won't have Sonic in it." Right. Yeah. Uh, so. Did you ever do uh, Sonic Robo Blast? Oh yeah, Sonic yeah. Robo Sonic Blast Robo Blast, Blast too. Yeah, that was amazing. Uh, right. You know, they, they they're still working on that game. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, which is what cool. was the? Do you do you remember the plots of any of your games? Oh, they were so like derivative. I mean, on some ancient computer around here, I still have probably the like Games Factory file. I don't know if I could open it anymore. <laughs> I remember one of them was just like just generic Sonic stuff. Like Robotnik shows up, and I think he like crashes some party that Sonic's having, and then they chase him to the floating <laughs> island, and then they crash there. Something like that. I don't know, but it didn't make any sense. It was just like. Uh, using starlight zone sprites i think that's okay i mean that that's essentially the plot of sonic generations that's true it makes yeah, as much sense exactly. as an official sonic game yeah you're right that is so i got a it's question like about your idea about the sonic <laughs> you mentioned that canonically classic sonic is the younger version of modern sonic well, this has been a source of some debate and some confusion uh, because I feel like they sh- you think they should be in separate universes. I just think like, why don't you just take the aspects that everybody likes of classic Sonic and kind of like put them together? I don't know. Just one Sonic? <laughs> like a refresh. So kind of moving on from right. modern Sonic to something in between. I don't know. Just like dif- differentiating them as classic and modern still feels kind of awkward to me, especially as as time goes on, you know? Well, right. Because it's weird, because it's like, he went through puberty, and then he turned into that. What happened? <laughs> How did he go from that to that? Right. Yeah. And in Sonic Forces, Classic Sonic Returns, which was the mm-hmm. tie-in That's game. That's the 3D to me. game that came out. They kept Classic around? They kept him around, because Generations, it kind of makes sense. Forces, he comes in, but he's referred to as Sonic from another dimension, repeatedly. Right. By different characters. <laughs> so it's like, weird. time... Is a dimension, I guess. Do you mean he's just from further back in the time? Why can't he talk? <laughs> yeah, why is he? <laughs> at what point did Sonic go through this massive growth spurt and learn to talk and also got buckles on his shoes or whatever? <laughs> yes. And thankfully, the Archie comics gave us the uh, long oh, explanation that, yeah. for how he got Where buckles he on his shoes. on the planet like a hundred times or yes. whatever. Um, it's an issue told in reverse because it's yeah. like, how did he get the buckles on his shoes? I like that in the... In the letters page for that one, they admitted, we just saw that Seinfeld episode and thought it was cool. <laughs> we figured it'd do a comic, a Sonic version. Seinfeld was the biggest thing, aside from Sonic. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the late 90s, man. Yeah. It was a weird time because uh, those Sonic comics did not know what they were doing for a while. Yeah, they were really floundering. Well, but yeah, between the show and, and Sonic Adventure, there was that period of like, what are we... Yeah. What is this comic? It was palpable. Huh. You could tell they were like... <laughs> Where are we going? We have no direction. <laughs> we killed off the villain because we thought we were going to end, I guess. And then, mm-hmm, and yeah. then now there's nowhere to go. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. And that was when I was like, okay, they just got to bring back Robotnik and everything's going to be back to normal. It'll be great again. Mm-hmm. Art Mawani's going to start penciling again. He'll get rid of, <laughs> he'll get rid of Ron Lim. <laughs> I was so tired of his. Uh, well, he looks I, so strange. Yeah, the eyes are like goggles, and like the yeah. sp- like the spines are very droopy. Yeah, so many people struggled with the new design. Like they couldn't just get that the spines were slightly longer. They were like, so they're really floppy now, right? It's like a <laughs> cape behind him. Or like, like no, just draw them like <laughs> draw them like two inches longer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it did take a while for it to like. F- to get figured out I think Sonic's it was model. Like not until the, the sort of fans took over the comic <laughs> at a certain point. That's yeah. when people started just drawing it normally. <laughs> yeah. There was, I'm trying to remember, I believe there was a, a period of time where he did come back to the Archie comic around around 150. He did he did a, a couple main stories and then some backup strips. Yeah, I remember him coming back. If you just stuck around a little bit longer, hey, you, just missed you, would have, you would have seen him return. I saw him coming back here and there, but I was like, why don't they just have him do every issue? Why is he doing like a four page backup story here? And like, a, yeah, <laughs> you know, I could almost see why editorially, because at a certain point, his style, which was very close to the sat AM style, the stories were becoming more 
a little older, a little more like about the political intrigue of the kingdom of Acorn, <laughs> and new Robotropolis, Sally's Robotropolis brother and, and stuff. All the stuff that was taking them even further yeah. away from what the games were doing. Like, yeah. right. Yeah. It's so bizarre that they doubled down on all the cartoon stuff, knowing the cartoon was over, <laughs> even like long after the games were clear, like Sonic Adventure came out and they were still like, well, we have like five more story arcs about Sally's brother and then, her mom was in a coma or whatever <laughs> to get through before we can before we can start veering towards where the games are. That's so funny. It's so I mean, it's so true. It is strange. I guess certainly we know from his actions that Ken Penders, one of the writers, <laughs> thought there was a lot of money to be minted by, you know, claiming I am the creator of Knuckles' dad. And if you ever want Knuckles to have a dad, <laughs> you come talk to me. And That's it's not gonna be so cheap. crazy that he like even slightly got away with that. Yeah, like you can't you can't copyright the idea of someone having parents, I, <laughs> especially like what? How did that work? Uh, I guess well, you definitely copyrighted specific parents. Yeah, yeah. You like Locke? Yeah. yeah. If you call him Locke, I guess that I get that part, but like, All right? They're just it's so weird to me. Well, that's I mean that's just kind of maybe my speculation of like why not create those characters, you know, or it seems like maybe they're like eh, Archie went down that route of all the characters having parents and families, and you can see how that turned out. So <laughs> screw it, they're all orphans. They never knew their families. Don't ask questions about it. They don't have ages. They don't have families. They don't have ages. The yeah. Characters <laughs> are just what they are. Tails is not a burden. Tails asks if he's a burden in Sonic Frontiers. Yeah, he does. <laughs> it is interesting that for like a series with so much lore, they rarely return to the same lore. Yeah. Like they're weird, always so. making up something new, which I think is why kids, you know, resonate with it. Cause it's like, oh yeah, I could just make up my own lore and it will exist. Like, mm -hmm. cause that's, yeah, it yeah. seems to be how it goes. Yeah, I could do my Sonic where he smokes cigarettes. Yeah. And has depression. I mean, yeah. what is it? Shadow has guns in that one game. Yeah, like, yeah. He says, where's that fan off, Chaos Emerald? Yeah. He's cursing. I want depressed. I want BoJack Sonic. <laughs> right. Did you? I want right. the token birdie of the Sonic world. <laughs> Did you ever try to get Sonic in those shows? No, never. <laughs> no. I mean, I, I didn't. Maybe have, if you'd ask, I didn't have any input on like <laughs> on what uh, fictional characters were showing up. Uh, they might have done a reference at some point. I don't know, but it, it is true. Like there are so many extremely fleshed out and conflicting versions of Sonic that there really is a kind of like just pick which which lore you want. Like you want the one where he and Tails live in a crashed spaceship with like yeah whatever you know <laughs> on the OVA. Yeah, you want the one where OVA. he's got his gang of freedom fighters or scratching grounder or whatever. Yeah, or do you want the one from the movies where he's got you know the cop dad and he has a bedroom <laughs> cop buddy? Yeah. yeah. Uh, who becomes his dad I, wait, uh, you haven't watched two so I guess I'm spoiling two. for you I'm not going to I'm sorry I did see one okay. and I heard the two was a lot better two sounds like the movie I would have wanted one to be yeah why do you start with Sonic's buddy the cop and not like <laughs> Tails and Knuckles after, like, after Sonic had been around for 20 years 30 years they didn't need to introduce audiences like you don't need to ease people into the concept of Sonic if they're already in the theater to see Sonic I feel like there was like a, a period where, I mean, before the movie, before Sonic Mania, uh, in kind of that mid 2010s where it seemed like Sega wasn't sure if Sonic had value or not. It seems like they kept like undercutting themselves in a way of like, like, oh, will people like Sonic? Like, may, you know, maybe oh, that yeah. certainly this, this the, you know, they're going to love a, a, a cross country road trip movie with a small town sheriff that we know <laughs> we know where they keep talking like about that. fucking Zillow every five minutes. What was up with that? Like <laughs> the that, Zillow what and is, Olive Garden. Like, yeah, nothing place, more relatable. Placement, yeah, I think. Sega has the lowest self-esteem of all the companies, <laughs> but fair enough because their fans are so mean to them. Yeah, like yeah. no wonder they're they don't have any confidence. Everybody's like shadows showing up in a game, like, and people are like, well, "I don't want this shit." Like, I don't want it's not shadow. We don't want shadow. We want classic more sonic <laughs> that's not inaccurate that i would say that the reception that i've seen has been positive to mixed in terms of i mean i've seen a lot of people sort of be like there's no way they could charge full price for this game and <laughs> yeah, uh yeah. and it's like well get ready because i'm i am confident they will charge full price for this game <laughs> i mean they gotta make money on it right they've got yeah they'll charge full price for two weeks and then and then the discounts mm -hmm. will happen yeah, yeah that tends so. to be how it goes with uh 
Sega and the Sonic games. Right. How, how much is Superstars right now on Steam? 20. It's 20 bucks. That was a $60 game in a That's couple months That's how long ago. Sega's confidence lasts. Two weeks. <laughs> and then they, and they're like, fine. Do you think fine, whatever. Do you think it's still dating back to like them failing with the consoles oh. or or do you think it's like more recent than that because i mean that feels like oh. fair enough to have self-esteem issues as a company when you you know we were <laughs> like nintendo's main competitor and then uh we fucked up so bad and, you know yeah. we had to move back in with our parents <laughs> yeah yeah i there was i can't remember now there was i feel like there was some interview with somebody talking about uh a meeting they had with yuji naka where they were presenting like oh we've done market research and sega isn't considered a cool brand anymore because of sony and uh, others and him getting like very upset and he's like what no sega is cool sonic is cool they're always cool kind of like that you know very self-defense i can't mm-hmm. remember it was peter moore it, i think oh, was yeah. it peter moore right okay. so I, I, I think it was part of the same story of like the fuck off story okay i think i think that i think those came from the same interview the fuck off i could be wrong uh but basically but yeah it's exactly what you said of the sega of america he was because he was briefly the sega of america president Mm -hmm. and and he what uh he was trying to convince the decision makers in japan which included eugene naka that they needed to make changes they said no and then there was some other basically it sounds like maybe sega of japan has occasionally possibly been a little difficult to work with. <laughs> we also sometimes have entertained the theory that maybe they're a, a front. And like, <laughs> they don't. They don't want to do that well. They just want to show like a steady right. book, um, <laughs> right? A front, perhaps yeah. for some uh, criminal element that perhaps <laughs> is shown in a positive light in a popular series that they work on. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you know, don't want to say anything one way or the other. But Interesting, yeah. I wouldn't be totally surprised. You know, not to mention yeah. all the pachinko uh, that happens. Yeah, yeah. Allegedly. Mm, allegedly. Yeah, alleged, allegedly. Allegedly. Pachinko, yes. Allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. Allegedly not everything. Where are we? Sorry, blank. Yeah, where now? Where we're, are we going? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> well, we we're talking about the comics. We we're talking about. Well, so, so Aaron, what what is your most favorite Sonic thing? Like you, you experienced a lot. You oh, mentioned yeah. the OVA. You read Archie. You watched the shows. Played a bunch of games. Like when you think of Sonic, like what is the one thing that you always go back to? You're like, yeah, this is this is Sonic. This is what I love. This is what's great. I feel like like the, the obvious answer is like just you know the uh, the Genesis games, and then I also really do love the OVA. Like it's weird and stupider than I remember it being as a kid, but like <laughs> I still really enjoy it. Like not in any kind of ironic way. I'm just like, yeah, this is cool. It's fun to like it's a fun adventure for me i 100 percent agree like uh, yeah there's things about it they're pretty embarrassing like like the whole weird girlfriend cat girl thing like and i don't know there's just certain elements that are stupid to me but but i, I, I wouldn't like change it anime anymore. from the 90s exactly like, yeah i was yeah. watching what was it like the 90s cutie honey anime and i kept thinking this feels a lot like the sonic <laughs> ova like specifically <laughs> I think they were using a lot of the same sound effects. It's like they had the same library or something. And there's also similarly a lot of side characters that weren't really doing anything, just kind of like hovering around in a group watching the action, which which happens a lot <laughs> in the Sonic OVA towards the end. That's true. I would I yeah. really wish that show or that OVA had kept going. Yeah. It'd be so cool if there was like you know, ten episodes of that or something instead of just two. Yeah. It's such a cool vision of Knuckles. Yeah. And it's such a great version of the sonic and tails dynamic i love it i love any version where sonic is always like telling tails to shut up and like shitting on him yes i like the fleet way yes, yes. I know people say he's too mean in that but i like when tails is like you saved me and he's like yeah nobody's perfect They're... that's my sonic <laughs> that's yes all. i fully agree there's two there's two they're too nice to tails tails needs to be bullied a little bit more yeah. uh sonic adventure i was replaying the beginning of it and i was struck by how when sonic first interacts with tails Amy and Knuckles, he's annoyed by all three of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what I want. I want Sonic is like impatient. He's like kind of pissed off that everybody else is kind of dumb, you know? Yeah. He's like, why do y'all have to suck? Can't you just be as cool as me? That's yeah. Like- <laughs> I, it, it works really well. And as for the OVA, uh, Ashlyn can confirm this, that anytime we're sort of like, oh, what should we watch? Like, I'll just sort of, I, it's not even a conversation. It's just like, I, 
put it on and then Ashlyn yells at me. Nice, nice. It's more like it'll be like, oh man, I had a really rough day. I'm really stressed. Maybe we could put something on. And then I'll like, I'll feel like I'll blink and then my eyes open and Sonic OVA is playing. And I'm like, what? <laughs> You yeah, because it'll like, cheer you up because it's so exactly yes. I was oh man, that was like a hundred Christmas mornings all smashed into one. That day, the uh, the soundtrack for that finally appeared online. Yeah, oh yeah. For years, I was like looking up like fan recreations of the songs from it, and I was like, no hope left. I was like, okay, the composer doesn't have the files anymore, or whatever we heard, and then suddenly they just popped up. Or, I mean, somebody but, did the work to yeah. get them, but. But for me, it just sort of popped up out of nowhere. They're not on Spotify, though, are they? Uh, no. I've only think so. I've seen them on YouTube, and then I've only seen them on YouTube as well. well. Yeah, I mean, because yeah. that wasn't an official release. Yeah, somebody yeah. emailed and was like, "Hey, would you have these?" And then they were like, "Oh yeah, I found them finally. <laughs> well, here's the full version of Lookalike. You didn't know there was a full version? Well, there is. Uh, Mind blowing. That was that was. And it was interesting too that they see what were the like kind of some of them were like demo versions or or early versions. They weren't the same as in the actual soundtrack right that was interesting. yeah um, there's some slight differences there's also a couple songs that aren't in the ova that were mm. released where it's like was this meant for sonic or is this just the demo tape of <laughs> you just had this in the same folder by accident or something yeah you know it was the 90s you just threw things in boxes you don't know exactly yeah <laughs> uh you know how they have those like reanimated projects where they take like all of shrek and they have animators like redo it oh yeah i feel like People would absolutely do Sonic OVA. I think they did, yeah. Oh, they did there already? There is one, yeah, yeah. Sure they ha- yeah. I think so. Oh, I saw it. We should watch that. That sounds fun. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty cool, Let's yeah. link to that, because that's. I would. I don't think I've seen it. Otherwise, I would have oh, shown it to you. I think one. it came out at the beginning of the pandemic, so there was a lot of stuff. Oh. That, like It was oh. early 2020, I think. Yeah. yeah it did. <laughs> Maybe it caused the pandemic. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Sonic, how could you? I actually watched an episode of Adventure of the Sonic the Hedgehog the other day, and I still love it, as, as like broken as yeah. that show is. <laughs> yeah. Every time I go back and revisit it, it just feels like the episodes are they're long. Like Every episode <laughs> yeah. is 30 minutes. It feels like and it should be was- like 11s or something. 100 percent like the they we're just used to that now so like it's like okay we we, we get the joke and mm-hmm. it can but at the same time i mean long john baldry long as john robotic baldry. incredible oh yeah mm-hmm. incredible jaleel white as sonic perfect iconic i, I love the tales yeah. voice that's my favorite tales voice oh. what's his name christopher evan christopher welch or whatever on that show, okay i think wow. yes who's still alive oh. yeah yeah <laughs> i remember hearing that he died <laughs> yeah um yeah, he's perfect tales. He sounds a little like he doesn't quite understand the words he's saying. I'm like, that's what I want from tales. Probably. That's right. We. Oh man. So you prefer actual child being tales? As I do. To uh, what's her name? Adult. Colleen O'Shaughnessy. Or is that her name? Mm-hmm. I mean, she does a good yeah. job, but she's just not a kid. And I like. I like hearing kids play kids. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. I can understand why you know if you're casting voices for a franchise that goes on indefinitely, you can't really use a kid because they'll age. But. But I don't know. He's really appealing but, on that I show. Mean, or you could do the thing like peanuts? Arthur or Peanuts where they just hire a new yeah. kid, maybe. Yeah. But yeah. I get why I'm you want like... consistency of like a proper adult actor. And Sonic can be an adult, but Tails, I think, should be a kid. Like, I do feel yeah. like that fits the vibe. Uh huh. And, you know, Scratch and Grounder, perfect. Perfect characters, perfect voices, designs. Yeah. I used to have a Grounder shirt that I think I had to make myself because I couldn't find one online. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, that would. That sounds amazing. <laughs> I just found some stock art and like screen printed it or something. Good idea. But the fun thing to me watching that show is that you can see, like, you have to piece together, like, okay, the writer intended this to be the joke. That's a stupid joke. But then the voice <laughs> actor, like, put the emphasis on the wrong word and the storyboard <laughs> artist, like, didn't show the thing that they're talking about and like you know and then the overseas animation bungled the action like you have to like work backwards to watch it. it's a very deep show you need a high iq very sophisticated <laughs> or whatever the, the copy yeah pasta is. you gotta yeah you gotta be able to like see the matrix code of it i can imagine yeah. that, that helps a lot because otherwise it is like the animation cells like look so like i really like how that version of sonic looks mm-hmm. i guess like if I broke it down, I would say I wouldn't like, I don't like the single mohawk. I liked it thing. at the time. He's got too much of a hot, I liked it at the time, and he's too much of like a hot dog face. <laughs> well, he eats a lot of chili dogs. Dog dog <laughs> it's a lot of chili dogs. But they've improved you his design. But I like the, I like the general, like, um, what do you call it? The stretchiness. Yeah, yeah. I think it works That's well. That's really there. fun. 
and he feels like he's like Looney Tune adjacent, which seems like the right yeah. vibe. Yeah. And I, my favorite Sonic shows that they've done have leaned comedic. I think Sonic Boom is the one that I think Ashlyn, you agree too that we probably like just like watching. That's the first 3D one, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's super funny. I've seen I've seen some good memes like out of context like scenes from it and stuff yeah because the joke yeah the joke writing is really solid uh you can tell that there's like a big like simpsons inspiration like the little town is full of characters that recur um another example incidentally of a sonic thing just building lore outside of the characters which i guess makes sense i mean it's like that's sega must be protective of like oh the you know you can't show sonic crying so it's like well if we got (laughs) to show someone crying we got to make sure that it's uh Princess Sally's brother and just have him cry. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. Do all the crying. Cried for so, so long. Imagining the OVA going on for like 10 episodes or something. What a dream that would be. Yeah. And how different Knuckles' character, shout out to Knuckles, my best friend Knuckles. <laughs> it's his birthday uh, tomorrow. We record these on oh. Thursdays. February 2nd is the 30th anniversary. Can you believe it's been 30 years wow. since Sonic the Hedgehog 3 oh my God. released Hedgehog Day? Echidna Day, Groundhog Day. <laughs> the the development that Knuckles' character would have received from the OVA because he's such a different character there. He he is like the treasure hunter. He can fly for some reason. He's described as Sonic's best friend. He's got a fun dynamic with Tails that is very rarely seen in general outside of the OVA. He's got a libido. <laughs> and he's got a libido. He's, got he's a, a horny version of Knuckles the Echidna. I love that, and, yeah. Yeah, because he got stuck just being the dumb meathead guy who always gets tricked all the time for like 20 years or whatever, right? But that version, I mean, yeah, it's like a totally different portrayal. Yeah. That doesn't feel wildly out of step with what little there was of him in the games, I guess. Yeah. Like all there was in Sonic 3 and Sonic and Knuckles was he got he got tricked once and then that became like his whole character, right? He got tricked. He's dumb. He's the guy that gets tricked. Yeah. And Sonic Adventure turns him into like sort of like a more stoic, solemn warrior. Oh, that's true. His theme theme song says, you know, he doesn't chuckle. But the very first thing we see him do is chuckle. He punches (laughs) the gas emeralds out of Sonic and he's chuckling all over the damn place. That's funny. It is funny. I'm sure. But like he seems like a bully kind of. Yeah. Yeah. He's like like very aggro. Into that more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I know they've done little references to his hat here and there. I think a lot of creatives in the sonic sphere have fondness for that version but yeah i would i would love if that was like a little more entrenched as like a legitimate strain of the sonic lore you know as opposed to just like a weird one-off that you can kind of reference yeah well it might become a part of the knuckles show because uh the knuckles's hat was teased for the paramount, Whoa, really? for the paramount knuckles show cool. yeah. so is, it, is that show gonna have idris elba yeah yep yeah wow He's really, I, know. I, I was surprised they got him and I was like, he's probably just going to do one. He was like, go get him in the booth for half an hour Knuckles and then he's never Knuckles again. But he's really like, you need me for two lines of this he's Paramount Plus God commercial now? now? Yeah. <laughs> I guess that show where he was a DJ didn't really pan out, huh? <laughs> what? <laughs> there was some Netflix show that lasted one season where it's like the premise wow. is Il- Idris Elba uh, is a DJ. Like, does he go to weddings and like? <laughs> I forget. It was like him in clubs and stuff. But oh, okay. Wasn't he like the the, the gunslinger or something? Stephen King was was he in right. that? Yeah, yeah, he was. Like, yeah. That that seemed like oh, this is gonna launch because hey, there's a bunch of those books and <laughs> no one cared. I think uh, Idris is savvy and he knows that Sonic is uh, uh, the arc is going up people are gonna be like marvel cinematic universe boring snooze we want the sonic cinematic universe we want more knuckles and i i think probably shadow will like get a show as you know that doesn't seem impossible to me we can only we, haven't seen, we don't know anything about the knuckles <laughs> show i know that we know i guess the titles and then incidentally on the ova we didn't david you were saying that the there was some hope that it was going to get released on blu-ray but then that was sort of stamped out but it's not hopeless it might release someday right it it, it's a contract thing where they don't really know who owns what or or they don't know who they would have to pay they don't know who they would have to pay if they released it here but it's just for the english voice acting part oh really i'm but is it just that because they could just release it in japanese i thought it was also more like well they did release it in japanese didn't they but they really i mean it's you can stream it in japan but you can't stream the japanese version here oh interesting i thought it was i thought it was something a bit more like because somebody licensed it out because when it was released it was really like to do with ADV or whatever. yeah ADV whatever, went out of business whatever company then, owns the like 
crumbs of ADV now or something. Right. I think I think that is part of it, but it is like we just don't know where like specifically who's supposed to get that. There's a few things I love. I think it also the music like, stuff. We'll never be yeah. able to come out again because of that. And it's like it sucks because like I guess if they did put them out, whoever theoretically is keeping it from from being put out would identify themselves to get some money. <laughs> <laughs> but at that point, it's too well, that's, late. Right. That's how we get them to identify themselves. Exactly, yeah. Just release it. And then Just like come. do an announcement, press release. You should be able to claim abandoned IP. Yeah, you know? exactly. Like, you know how Lost they have found. like, like, oh, it's out of the thing. But it's like, hey, if you haven't used this character for five years... I can just do what I want with it. Exactly. I they should be able to do whatever I want. <laughs> they should. I, oh, yeah. They could maybe do like a press release where they're like, we're going to put it out. And then before they actually did, you know, whoever whoever would get mad would come knocking and uh, yeah. be like, okay, here's your money. Yeah. You just do it like a wedding of like, if anybody objects, exactly. otherwise yeah, yeah. <laughs> we are releasing yeah, this. Yeah. <laughs> That'd uh, be cool. I think that's what Ken Penders is doing. Right? <laughs> yeah, that seems to be his whole, his whole MO. Everybody just, keeps objecting. I'm going to do whatever I want, <laughs> and somehow nobody's going to stop me. That's right. And also, nobody's going to start him. He's He hasn't done anything. Like he's, <laughs> he's, it's been it's been over 10 years at, of like vaporware for this comic. But that's his uh, own dysfunction, right? That's not anybody actually blocking oh, him from doing it? Correct. That's his own it dysfunction. Is a, yeah. But it, he, is re- he is releasing an Archie reprint like he's oh, accepting what? pre-orders he he was sent i guess like the that proof seems pretty illegal uh, I know. uh <laughs> right well it's called the lara sue beginnings because it's a, it's a trade of the archie or the mobius 25 years later story oh, from God. archie where sonic is a king everybody's and favorite Sally. yeah that's like yeah. around when i gave up on it <laughs> they're printing yeah. this garbage uh, yeah so that that's coming out i think he said oh like they should be sitting on his table at the next Comic Con, so I, I don't know if you ever go to the San Diego Comic Con, but if you do, you could find Ken Penders and buy that and say, "Wow, you you did it!" <laughs> it's like it didn't stop you. I have to admire his perseverance, although I have to not admire his uh, lack of actual progress, <laughs> like the fact that he still hasn't yeah. put it out. Yeah, it it is very slow. Every once in a while, he will release like a single page and go, "Look, I am doing it." <laughs> And everyone just shits on it for like three years. Yeah, right. So it's a pretty right. tragic tale. I, uh, I think what it was. Maybe it'll have a, ha- a happy end. Right. I don't know. But I think what it was is that at the beginning, when he filed for his copyrights and then Archie sued him, he needed to show intent that he was going to do things with these characters. Mm-hmm. And then once he won, he's like, oh, I guess I got to do something with these now. <laughs> That's sort of, I think that is sort of it. Like, oh, yeah, I'd like to do uh, it. But. I got other things going, you know, uh, like that film that's never going to get released or my right. other film that's never going to get released. You know, he's got other things going. Yeah. What a character. Well, that's, <laughs> he's, he is quite a character. There's what a, there's a lot of characters in the Sonic universe and he's definitely one of them. Hey, speaking of characters, I want to toss some like quick questions to you, Aaron, while we still have sure, yeah. a little bit of time left. So yeah. How about, Favorite character and then favorite obscure character. Okay, so favorite character just out of like the main characters. Yeah, yeah, just that. I guess out of it could be the same answer for both. Maybe your favorite character is who? I don't know. Right? Maybe it's Elias. You brought him up more than once, so <laughs> that's true. That's true. I mean, uh, I do really like that. Uh, well, there's so many different versions. I do like OVA everybody, but OVA Knuckles, I would say, and OVA Robotnik is really good. Yeah, I love Scratching Grounder and Coconuts. I, I kind of like Antoine from the Saturday morning cartoon. Yeah. I like, I like he's such a shitty character, though. <laughs> uh, Big the Cat. Yeah. He's pretty good. Absolutely. They, they should do Sonic X Big Generations, huh? Now we're talking. I would, yeah. uh, I'd, I would pre order that so it. hard. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Big, big fans. Uh, Ken Penders is another one of my favorite characters. <laughs> <laughs> he's pretty entertaining. Uh, I wonder if anybody owns his life rights. Yeah. Uh, Does he own the rights to himself along with all the I don't know. <laughs> I wonder if he'd license it out. I think we've talked about that, Grant, about like coming up with an outline and like pitching it. The Penders Chronicles or something. I feel like you don't even need his his permission. Just call him KP or something. They did it with other celebrities. Yeah, KP. Yeah, Pen, the Pen unauthorized. Pen Kenders, right. yeah. Ken, yeah, the unauthorized Ken Penders story. It's it's like when they released two Brady Bunch movies. One was authorized and one wasn't, but they both <laughs> told the same story of how that show was made. Oh, more obscure characters I like. 
his his niece and nephew from Sonic Live. Uh, Classic uh, Sonic characters. <laughs> the Ken Pender's nieces and nephew from the very <laughs> awkward Archie comic that is all uh home still photography, amateur still photography <laughs> and Right. It's uh, so crazy yeah. that they let him it's do that. Drawn over it. It's the insane. most self indulgent. They hold a they hold a TV remote sideways. Well, <laughs> yeah. To pretend they're playing. It's because on the cover that photo is taken in Ken Pender's house. <laughs> that is his entertainment system. It has a Sega CD and a Genesis connected to it. The other photos were taken at the niece's house. She presumably did not own a Sega Genesis, and that's why they had to hold the remote. If he had stayed at his house and taken all the photos with his son, so absurd. You're gonna be a star, kid. I'll put you in the comics. Yeah. Uh, oh, another. Uh, okay, more favorite characters. Yeah. Nate Morgan, the the guy who showed up <laughs> yeah. and did nothing for like 30 issues and then dies. Uh, yep. <laughs> Classic character. Yeah. Vaporized. Yeah. And then it, uh, yeah. I remember that part. That little blonde human girl who also did nothing. I forget her name, but she's like somebody's little cousin. Uh, Hope. Hope. Yeah, Hope yeah, Kintobor. Yeah. Yeah. Hope Kintobor. Yeah. I knew she was related to somebody. <laughs> she's uh, Snively's niece. Snively, right? Yeah. He's another favorite character. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and that Ram from that one episode of the Saturday morning cartoon. Oh, Ari. Ari. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The one that can't be trusted. Yeah. Uh, he was cool. Yeah, he is cool. He showed up in a couple episodes. He was a reoccurring character. Wow. He's good. I like that you brought him up. Oh. I'll high five you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that was actual contact. Uh-huh. Also, the oh, <laughs> legitimate favorite character. Some of those were sarcastic. The old man owl from the OVA. Love him. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, was there hey, another special man. guest? <laughs> oh, it's me, your favorite character. Oh my god, I've never felt so starstruck. <laughs> uh, I like when he mistakes the flower for Sonic. Yeah, every time that's, I like it. That's a good it joke. Makes me happy. I remember being surprised that it made sense because it felt like it shouldn't. It for sure <laughs> you know? should not make sense. Sonic doesn't look like a flower. Why would Sonic remind you of a flower? He's just not. But he looks like these flowers, yeah. and it's kind of reasonable. Like it's a weird. I feel like it doesn't actually read that well, but I understand it visually. Yeah, you know? it doesn't pay off. It definitely doesn't pay off. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, let's see. They could have paid that off in like episode nine or ten of the full OVA series. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah. He becomes a gardener. <laughs> what about least favorite characters? Are there any characters who you you um, particularly dislike? Uh, definitely Sally's family. Oh, in the comic. Yeah. Every one of them just sucked. There was like nothing but yeah. trouble and like they were bad, frustrating kind of like uh, obstacles to the characters progressing and also just obstacles to good stories. Man, remember how many issues were devoted to just King Max and whether or not he was mad at you? <laughs> it was always just like. <laughs> Gee, I hope Sally's dad's not mad at me. Yeah, hey, yeah. kids, it's me, the coolest character in the world. Uh, oh, I think my girlfriend's dad is pissed at me again. I don't know. It is, it, that is one of the more baffling aspects of that series, because King Max should be nothing but grateful for the fact that Sonic rescued him. And he was saved turning his into a Chaos away. Emerald or whatever, right? He was turning right, he, yeah. he turned into a big old, yeah, he was just a piece of rock candy and then uh, <laughs> and then he got saved and, and sonic was like well i should probably go after the guy who turned you into rock candy and then uh did that too like yeah. sonic if it wasn't for sonic king acorn would be dead he so would be dead. yeah jeffrey st john another least favorite character <laughs> uh, <laughs> that i just accepted him as as a kid i was like oh of course there's this weird like older skunk guy <laughs> who always is like predatory towards sally or whatever <laughs> shows yeah. up and kisses her in front of sonic and stuff but then yeah in retrospect you're like whoa what a shitty like ken pender's character <laughs> yeah and then he i this is an asterisk with jeffrey st john that always must be brought up when his name is brought up which is that ken penders decided one day on twitter to post that in his version of the story canonically jeffrey st john takes sally's virginity <laughs> oh my god he 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 did isn't he is, like yes he's way older right isn't he canonically like 30 no he's supposed to be 20 and she's 16 okay so if you consider the fact that ken penders grew up in the 60s and 70s 
I, I feel like there were a lot of Hollywood things where that was yeah, perfectly yeah. But fine. He, but he maybe, doubled yeah. down and was like, you can't, he was even like, he was like a Tim Robinson character about it. He's like, you can't be weird about yeah. the ages because it's a fictional world and they don't even have those hangups that you do. Because they're be animals. Right. They're... <laughs> I think he also made a tweet that like, oh, she's 16 in our years, but she's 32 in Mobius years. Oh my God. It's like, okay, now we're getting, it got, it got, he, he made a, he made a weird joke and instead of just going, okay, Okay, maybe it was in bad t- taste. Let me move on. Yeah. He, he did double and triple down on it. It, it is one of the, yeah. the stranger things that Ken has done, and he has done a few strange things. But uh, that's pretty high on the list. Yeah, yeah. But I feel yeah. I, I, uh, uh, this is Ken. It's just Ken. I don't know. And there were so um, many knockoff or like spinoff characters from him because he had that whole like the, the secret underground squad or whatever. And then other characters were like, "Oh, can I join that too?" Remember, they were like months and months of backup stories of people training to join his like his underground the secret freedom fighters yeah yeah i think that was i think that was after ken i think but i could be wrong okay. yeah um, no the the secret freedom fighters that was uh an ian thing where it was okay, like i thought oh, that was ian but, but i yeah. stopped reading by that point wasn't it like like heavy and bomb from chaotix were joining it too I mean, I, I don't know when this was, maybe in the 60s or 70s issues. Uh, it was like a backup feature story where them and like some of the, the Australian ones. Why does that sound familiar? Oh, to OK. Yeah, yeah. OK. Yeah. They were all joining I know what together. you're talking about now. Yeah, there was a, a backup strip because when Ken Penders wrote Endgame, he was like, I'm moving on to, to Knuckles. And apparently a bunch of comic retailers were like, oh, but we need Ken's name on it. it Ken's name <laughs> sells books. No. So he came back to do some backup strips about princess sally and then also jeffrey st john yeah having wild adventures and it was yeah like was tales of the secret there, right? i forgot right because a way later when ian took over there was an actual group called the secret freedom fighters oh, which was okay. more like permanent as opposed to just this one-off backup strip yeah speaking of the australian ones it's pretty weird that there is like australia on mobius <laughs> like that they <laughs> you know specifically only australia exists along with yeah, like they, the they call it. down under down but under, they did yeah. they did later say and the ova kind of mm-hmm. implies it that mobius yeah. is like a future it's a planet of the apes situation oh, yeah, it's a yeah. future destroyed earth i don't right? know if i like that but i guess it's canon i have to accept it whatever no it's canon in that version yeah. of right i mean i like it in the ova i'm not sure i like it in the comics you know all right I think it's better to assume that every alien planet has an Australian equivalent. Yeah. That's just what <laughs> There's I think. a place on every planet. That <laughs> yeah. Uh, when we finally go to Mars, you'll find it. You'll be like, wow, it's going to be great. Down under um, on Mars. Yeah. Wes Weasley is another character on the favorites list for me. Just like, oh, how are you? How are you? <laughs> Phil, Sil- Phil Silvers, right? Just put him in Sonic. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Every time he showed up was like such a delightful treat for me. Like, not, not sarc- sarcastically. I just love that character. Well, having you show up on our show has been a delightful treat. We're going to start wrapping it up. But uh, before we play the outro theme song, Aaron, thank you for being here. We'll have your links in the description. But yeah, Ashlyn mentioned your, your show earlier. And just, yeah, I don't know if you wanted to, uh, for maybe listeners who don't know, if you wanted to pitch that out or tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, sure. Um, I do... Uh indie web cartoon along with industry work uh my indie series is called sublo and tangy mustard it's probably easier if you're trying to find it just type aaron long cartoon or something it'll come up uh, but anyway uh it's pretty cool i think i like it um <laughs> go on youtube and check it out it's also on newgrounds um i have a patreon patreon.com slash aaron long which funds more episodes of that yeah, I guess that's the main stuff. I watched episode fifteen. I love Sublo. Oh. I love Sublo's design. Thank He's, you. He looks like he looks like Mister Dink who got trapped in a <laughs> submarine costume. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> that's awesome. That's great. Yeah, those are linked in the description, dear listener. So uh, check that out. Oh wait, one more thing. I have some. I think on my SoundCloud, I actually have some Sonic remixes and stuff. Uh, oh, oh hell yeah! Very okay. good. Yes. Yeah. Let, let right, just, this music uh, aspect of your life that you yeah. haven't talked oh, much wow. about. Yeah, I do music. Hang on. I got to figure out the URL really fast. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens whenever you get a hit tweet. You have to be like, oh, wait, hold on. Got to check out my sound. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think you can send me the links at any time. I, I mean, okay. I don't think I can. It's soundcloud.com it slash Aaron Long songs. 
So okay. oh, check it out. There's, there's two or three Sonic songs. That rhymes. Yeah. I get it. <laughs> Aaron Long songs. Oh. Angel Island one and uh, some other thing somewhere. Would, would you ever legally change your last name to Long Songs? <laughs> I mean, if I was doing music as a career, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Could you upload those songs to Spotify? so that I can include them in my 500 song plus Sonic Plus playlist. I should. Uh, I should put all my stuff on should. Spotify. Collect that passive income. Yeah. yeah. I wow. could be making You're like making five it. cents a year. Yeah, yeah, pennies on the quarter. I could buy a fuzzy peach. It's a Canadian candy. <laughs> you could definitely get a cutie, I think. <laughs> David, will you take us out? Oh, I guess I can. Because it is that time again. You can hear that soothing music start to filter in you know it's like you're sitting down it's dinner it's 7 p.m you're like yeah i just wanted to grab a bite with with my loved one and you're sitting across that little table that sits too but sometimes people try to sit four or even six there and it just doesn't work it's incredibly pain and uncomfortable to have that many people but you know what if you had six people sitting at a two table table two person table why you could all you could say to all of them hey I hope you enjoyed another episode of Sonic Weekly. That's right, Sonic Weekly, the podcast which you just listened to. You could tell the other five people sitting at your two-person table to, to be sure to subscribe to the podcast if they haven't yet on their favorite podcatcher of choice, be it Apple Podcasts, be it Spotify, or if you want to go open source, remember there's always Podcast Addict. Addict. One day they will sponsor us. I don't think they sponsor anything. That's fine. Who cares? You know what? We had a good time. And of course, if you want to get a hold of us, you can always send us an email at sonicweeklypodcast at gmail.com. Send us a line. We like, we enjoy hearing from you. We enjoy reading what you have to say. And of course, if you wanted to talk to us, you know, live, you could do that in our Discord server, which you only get the link if you do email us. Say, give me that link. And we'll say here, we hope you enjoy. Oh, yeah. Uh, and we also have that YouTube channel. It's at Sonic Dash Weekly. You can subscribe there and listen. And while listening, you can even watch footage of various Sonic games being played. Whoa, so exciting. I'm excited. I'm always excited about Sonic the Hedgehog. Just like I was excited that we had our guest, Aaron Long. We know we've thanked you before. We'll thank you again because, hey, it's the end and we have to thank everyone. I also got to thank the wife of the podcast, uh, actual wife of Grant, uh, an actual wife of an MP3 file. Ashlyn, thank you for joining. Of course, uh, thank you, Smoothies, for the edit, making sense out of nonsense. Uh, sorry that Bo couldn't make it. You know, he's busy. He's bowing around. But be sure to always check out Rings of Saturn, uh, see what he's up to. And Grant, Thanks for kicking this all off. And thanks, of course, for always uh, sending us off on our way. You uh, you hold the love in all of our hearts. Toot toot. <laughs> toot toot. Sonic Warrior. Sonic Warrior. Yeah. David just wrote a whole paragraph and you said, okay. <laughs> <laughs>